Okay, you guys know that I'm in a band. Maybe you don't. But I just got something cool. <laughs> so yeah, I have a Judas Priest uh, tribute band called Turbo Lover. And I have a lot of these costumes I have to wear, and uh, I don't have to wear them, but I, I like to. You know, Judas Priest wear is famous for their, their leather. I mean, let's let's be honest, guys. It's BDSM gay leather boy stuff. Cause Rob Halford is, is a gay man that likes leather, and I portray him on stage, and so I wear these clothes, these jackets, these custom outfits that we recreated, right? Look at this thing. This thing weighs a ton. That's my turbo lover. This is other stuff. This is heading to the highway. I have a different outfit. That's hellbent for leather. Look at that thing. That thing weighs freaking 50 pounds. This one's for something else. That's that's for private use. He went with that. Okay. Anyway, so for those of you that are following me. So I needed this thing. I had this custom made. I just ordered this. This is a wardrobe box. Let me latch it. So you can see this thing rolls around. It's too big. It's too big. <laughs> what am I, what was I thinking? It's too big. <laughs> I th well, I think it'll fit in the car. I think it'll fit in the car. I do have a truck and I have a van, so it'll, I'll figure it out. I could just drive it to the gig, but check this out. Okay. It opens up. All right. I'm seeing it really for the first time. Um, so you've got two racks here that hold clothes, suits and things. There's a drawer here. Keep my boots and hats. Boots and hats and boots and pants and boots and pants. Um, this thing was like, I wanna say it was like two grand. I have too much money to spend on stuff. Where's the receipt for this thing? It's right in here. I'm wrong, it wasn't two grand. It was it was a thousand dollars, but it was still a lot. It was a thousand eighty nine dollars. So yeah, I ordered it from uh, Road Cases. Dot com. Actually, not showing anything. Um, yeah, roadcases.com. This thing took a long time. It took like over a month. Let's see if it'll hold any of these. So that ah, this one is the last one that I wear. That's for the Encore. Yeah, it's a little long. Well, I figured, yeah, you can't see on the camera. I figured it's gonna hang down a bit. So that, that just fits in there like that. All right, let's try the vest. Now see, here's the thing though. Like I need to put the shorter ones over here. I need to put them kind of in order. I gotta look at the set list. Cause I change outfits every couple songs. Cause that's how I roll. That's how you do a metal show. That's the thing about Judas Priest, right? Because they change outfits all the time, right? See, I wear this one during Turbo Lover and Desert Plains, and it's not quite the right color. The one that he wore in the Turbo Lover video was like red, silver, white, you know. This one's kind of steampunky kind of vibe. So I thought that would work, right? Now this one, this one's my pride and joy because I had this custom made. My buddy Terry Wise at Sculptured Skins, he actually specializes in making um, gay fetish leather wear for the bear community. He will tell you that proudly. He's a friend of mine. Listen, I have gay friends. I'm not weird or anything. I'm straight. I'm married, but I'm cool. I understand, you know. So. It's, I'm, I'm fine with it. I understand. This is, listen, if you're going to be in a Judas Priest tribute band, you've got to understand a couple of things. And these are just the way it is. So I'm just getting it out of the way. All right, but it's way too long. But I can just stuff it in there. That's what I said on my honeymoon. Come on, honey, I'll just stuff it in there. A lot of leather tassels and shit. But it'll, it'll fit. I'm just worried. I don't want to get any of this fringe. 
It does seem like maybe this isn't like it's like longer on this side. Yep. And then and then in the drawer, did I bring my boots in? I don't think I brought the boots in. In the drawer, I'll put like the gloves and the oh my chaps. The chaps, you gotta have. The chaps, gloves will go in the drawer. And the leather gloves and the hat. And uh Where's the other leather? Okay, leather, gloves, and then this. You gotta have this. If you don't subscribe, you're getting a spanking. I'm not spanking you, I'm not doing that. Um, all right, here we go. Ta-da! This is the hardest part. Yeah, oh, look, it just went right like a glove. Like a glove. Look at that. Oh, I can't wait to spray the band name, the big logo, all right on the side. We're going to come rolling in. with. They're like, look at this cover band with all this equipment. <laughs> oh, it's great. And actually, I had designed, I say designed, I had reconfigured this shelf, or, or this uh, closet, so I could just roll this thing into the closet. Like that, and it fits perfect. It's gonna fit perfect. I love it. Okay, but for the purposes of the camera, I'm gonna have it out here. So I don't have my microphone on, I'm yelling. How cool is that? So the, the reason I wanted this was because not always can I walk off stage to change my jacket. Uh, matter of fact, the show that we just did at the uh, dive bar here in Las Vegas. I don't know if you got to see it. You know, uh, you, you only have the stage. And there's no backstage. And so I just had to walk over to the side and take off my jacket. And it's not as fun and revealing. You like to come out and reveal your outfit. And, um, well, I still can't do that. But this gives me a home base, right? Because what I'll be able to do now is not only will I have my outfits here, but once I'm set up, it seems a little wobbly to me. I'd like to have another set of wheels there. But anyway, I, I'll, I can have my wireless system right up on top of here if I like. And I'm going to have my array of, you know, I'll have, I'll have my drink. I'll have my vocal ease. I'll have, it'll be a little home base. Right, I actually have a teleprompter that I use. Maybe I'll show that to you later. I can keep my keyboard for that thing up here. And I, know, I know there's musicians out there going, oh my God, this clown has a teleprompter. I'll... Have you know, this is the same one Ozzy used, used to use as well as Rob Halford used to use this very same one until he went to the in-ear prompts. You know, listen, this is how professional music is done. The teleprompter does a little bit more for me than just give me the lyrics. It gives me particular notes, gives, uh, gives me notes about, for instance, what jacket to put on next. It'll uh, tell me what side of the stage or where I need to go. It'll, it gives the band notes, like uh, as the next song is displayed on the screen, everybody looks at it, they know what key to be in, which guitar they're using, it's just stage notes. You would normally write those down and have those printed out on the pages, but we use this screen. It's a little bit more high tech. It's basically a Windows computer and um, it, it has all my little notes on it, right? And so uh, I don't have to sit there and read it or anything, but it does. it is nice that it, it has the set list, tells me what the next song is. It'll give me certain cue points. There's certain things that I always need to remember as a singer uh, because some of these songs, like you'll do the chorus, let's say two, three times, and then at the end of that chorus, you might go up a note or down a note. You might be da na 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 or na 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 na. You know, you do you get what I'm saying? So anyway, this is very cool. I like it. It was a little over a thousand bucks, but listen, if you're gonna be 
in a professional Las Vegas performing band, you've got to have your shit together. So I'm very happy. This is very cool. Look at that. How cool is that? So I'll be able to come over, grab my outfit. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put lights in here. Yep. So I'm going to put lights in here. There I am. And see, I need to have a, 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 an area to keep certain stuff, you know, for instance, I have that drawer, but this gives me a little home base, you know what I mean? A little place to the stage, a little place to the stage that's all mine. Hello, I'm Bob Alford from Turbo Lover. That's my, that's my Birmingham, my Birmingham accent. It's Rob Alford. They called him a yam yam, he's from the black country. So, yeah, there you go. So, you know, if the, I don't just do cars and I don't just cook and eat. I like music and um, was always big a Ju I was always a giant Judas Priest fan and I just loved the music and um, I just happened to be able to kind of be bald and with a beard and kind of sort of look like I'm a little bit on stage and I can also kind of sort of sing like him a little bit. Rob Halford is one of the greatest heavy metal singers in the world. And to just even be able to do it 10% is a lot. So I'll never ever say that I'm as good or anything as close to Mr. Rob Halford, the greatest singer of all time. But I do my best. So, um, hey. If you live in Vegas or if you're willing to visit Vegas and you want to see me September 1st this year, 2024, I'll be turning 50 years old and I'll be having a giant birthday party celebration at Danny Count's Vamped on Sahara. It's open to the public. September 1st, 7 p.m. It's a free show. Be there. Turbo Lover will be taking the stage and then afterwards there'll be an all-star jam with all the Las Vegas musicians. There will be cake. I'll be there. It'll be a heavy metal jam. It's gonna be fucking awesome. I'm gonna turn 50, I'll be 50 years old at that point. And uh, you can come share being old as shit with me. Ah! It fucking fell over. Almost onto my drums. All right, that's a problem. I can't believe, I'm glad I caught that on camera. Cause I'm sending this to roadcases.com. What if that happened on stage? I was just trying to put my jacket in there and this fucking thing fell over and missed my drums by this much. Imagine that happened on stage, landed on someone or something important. Oh my God. Fuck. I was just complaining about, look at that. I was just complaining about the stability of this thing. That's not gonna do, right? I mean, I guess maybe you have to have it like this all the time. You can't just have it wide open. Cause I mean, I, I admit these are heavy as compared to regular suits, you know, like these are outfits. This is supposed to be a heavy, heavy road case. You know, I mean, for one thing, I'm not happy with the way this needs to be notched or something because they put some kind of plastic PVC or something in here. My God dang jackets fell down. They all fell off the rack. And here's the other thing, by the way, as soon as, you know, I'm not going to be able to transport this thing upright. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to take it, um, I'm going to have to lay it down, which means all my shit's going to go everywhere. Right? 
So I'm going to have to do some modification to make sure that everything stays in place. There's going to have to be a strapping system added to this and some additional feet or something to make sure that doesn't happen again because that's not cool at all. I can't believe that just happened. Because I need to trend, I'm, I'm, my plan was to lay this thing down, right? Lay it down when I transport it and then stand it back up because I was going to lay it down in the back of my uh, Maserati. Believe it or not, I measured the car to make sure it would fit back there, and it does. So what I need to make is I'm going to have to make a strap system that mounts here and here and straps this stuff down. And also, there has to be some kind of thing to keep this stable. I guess I got to keep it like this, all right? This jacket is just, you know, forget about it. The problem is, is it keeps sliding outward because this thing, I need to adjust this and move it up a notch so that it tilts that way naturally. That's the problem. So I need to drill, under, drill another hole and move this up. This bracket needs to be adjusted. That's the problem. Because it keeps sliding out this way. Because when I'm ready to transport this, I was gonna lay it on its back. So clearly there's some work that has to be done. That was scary. It almost landed right on my drums. It missed by, by an inch. So there's work to be done on this. I will work on that. It's going to be easy to do, not a big deal, but um, I will forward this video to roadcases.com for them to consider some sort of stability uh, feature to this. All right, just so you can see this thing, this is my uh, teleprompter. Let me. Uh, Click on the thing so you can see. So basically, um, it just uses like PowerPoint and then this USB pedal, right? You can you can basically navigate, go to the top page, this page. So what you have to do, that's the bottom, that's the top. Um, let me use the little mouse mousey here to go to slideshow and start slideshow. So once you start slideshow, you're in this mode, right? And so you can, how cool is that, right? So there's, there's my, like, okay, so like this will tell me, Metal Gods, use the studded trench coat. I already know they use that. Um, some of these have notes, some of them don't, because I know what I have to do. Um, but these are the different things. Here's a perfect example, right? Every time I do Green Metalishi, I always forget this line, because it goes, making me do things I don't want to do, and then making me see things. I always mix those up for some stupid reason, because I'm stupid. Um, there was another note in here. There's just little notes that I make on certain songs. Most of these I know pretty well by heart. Here's some of the songs we're in, Love Bites. We just added that. So like on the end of Love Bites, that's, you know, in the dead of night, Love Bites. In the dead of night, Love Bites. In the dead of night, Love Bites. I gotta remember that that's the the long ending one because I'd never know which one is which touch of evil we're doing out in the cold sorry I'm not paying attention here parental guidance you know because I always forget this part put on my jack before you get too old let's rock and roll then there's a ba da ba da we don't need no 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 parental guidance here I love that song um, so these are some of the things we're doing and uh, it's just a great little system, right? It's called the Wolfgang Telemonitor. I, I wasn't gonna promote it because the guy that made it, I think, died, and I don't think you can buy it anymore. So I have a little wireless keyboard. Once it's set up, I don't have to really touch it. But there it is. And it's basically a Windows computer running like Windows 95 or something. I don't know, what is it what run in here? XP, I think, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is my rig. This is, I think I've showed this before. I use the Line 6 stage scape system, and uh, what's cool about Line 6, uh, you can't buy any of this anymore. 
So don't, I mean, you can buy it used. But what's great about it is, like all of the mixers that are out there now have the iPad integration where you can use an iPad or a tablet rather. But this one has one it built in with knobs on it. I like, I like actual knobs, a volume knob. I like you can walk up to this thing and operate it. And then it daisy chains with the line, you know, with all the different speakers. I have the line six speakers back there. And uh, it's just an amazing system. And I can't recommend it enough for people that aren't sound people. If you're a sound guy, this might piss you off or you might like it. But I could drill down into, like I can go into setup and what I mean is I can double click on my microphone and then I can go into the tone and adjust the tone. Now you can do it this visual way or you can go in and do it this way, old school, right? Um, you can go in, you can apply effects. Let's see, I forgot how to get out of this mode. Um, power? Oh, I don't know what that does. Oh, quick tweak, global effects. I can go in and change my sound effects. It's a great system. I can go into my monitors. This is what I like. Watch this. Like, I can pull up my ear monitor, right? There's my ear monitor. And then I, if I tell it, okay, more wireless in the ear monitor. See how it draws a little line and shows you where it's going? It's just very visual. And I'm not a sound guy. So I can pull up my floor monitor, right? This one says stream because I run a separate mix out to this thing called the iRig. So when I'm doing my live streaming, that plugs into my MacBook, right? I got it unplugged. But it plugs in the MacBook or the phone, and I can send a separate mix to that. How cool is that? So if you're into music uh, production, you might think this is kind of cool. This is my wireless system. I use the Shure KSM8. This thing is a really nice, it's about 2001 microphone. Pretty nice. It's really good. And then I use uh, the Shure in-ears. This one is the P3RA, if you're wondering. And then I just have a backup just in case, or if somebody else wants one, I have this extra one that's not as good. I also discovered using rechargeable batteries. These are USB lithium ion rechargeable batteries. Because I go through a set of batteries every show, every time I use it. And I thought, why do I keep throwing away batteries? So I bought a set of these and I recharge them every time. And they work great. I can't recommend them highly enough. So that's a peek at my music room. You know, this is a little Marshall uh, four by 10 and then this is a regular four by 12 and Daryl brings his own head for that uh, Mark he uses this little Ampeg rig over there. That's not the base. He uses that's a Nikki six Thunderbird But yet he, he has his own. I think he has a Spectre and he has a Fender This is a dime bag amp now. I'm missing the dime logo on the the cabinet but um, as you know, I used to work for Vinnie Paul through that relationship. I made a relationship with D drum uh, Dean, and they also had the Dime series of amps, and I got that uh, from them, uh, and D-Drum so graciously gave me a good deal on these. I get like a, a little discount. And we're hooking these up to a DDR4, the D-Drum 4SE uh, brain for triggers. Um, these are the D-Drum triggers. Now, normally what you would want are the Vinnie Paul series of triggers. Those are much better. Eric actually uses those uh, for KISS, not for the audience, but only for the band's in-ears because there's so much explosions and noise, they didn't want to use the actual mic'd drums for their in-ears, so they set up some triggers uh, just so that they can follow the kick and the snare, really. That's really all they need, uh, just for beat, uh, just to follow click, basically. Um, but I wanted to be able to tweak these. I don't play drums, but I know enough about them that I wanted to be able to uh, record from trigger or have triggered sound effects. So this is called the Hybrid 6. It's called the 6 because it, it normally has another kick and it normally has another floor tom, but we have it rigged this way. This is how I want it. These are the Pasty Color Sound 900s because they're fucking red. And of course, my boy Eric hooked us up with a gazillion sticks. So he makes sure that we, we play with, uh, let me get these pulled out, sorry. These are Zildjian's. These are the ones he plays on stage or used to. And I'm like, dude, we shouldn't be using these for practice. Like these are Kiss 50th anniversary Eric Singer sticks and we just practice with them. And you know what's even worse? It's for years, I just used Vinnie Paul Vic for Sticks, <laughs> because he gave them to me, and I regret we just 
murdered them, you know, we just wore them all out. Anyway, so this is our jam room. What do you think? Are you a musician? Do you, would you think this is a cool jam room? We have a fridge with, you know, frosty beverages. There it is. Carpet just for sound reduction. But what's cool about this carpet, and if you're a Judas Priest fan, Rob has a leather jacket with that same dragon with a longer tail on the back of it. And when I saw it, I go, fuck, that's, I gotta have it. That's perfect. And this is just like a Van Halen looking carpet that I thought would be a great, perfect drum mat. And then this is just a cool piece of carpet that I just, I literally nailed it to the wall using a, a, a ram set just to try to catch some of the reverberation coming off the back of that because you need to try to catch the echo. But since we're carpeted in here, we don't really, it's not that bad. But Stefan plays too fucking loud. He turns that thing up to, cranks it, right? And and then, then he has to try to go louder and then he has to play harder. I'm like, dude, turn down. So yeah, man, that's my jam room. So September 1st, be here in Las Vegas for my big birthday show. I'll be doing some official promotion about it soon at Counts Vamped on Sahara, September 1st, 2024, 7 p.m., free show. Um, be here, come see Turbo Lover. There's gonna, I can't, I'm not allowed to say who's gonna be there. There's gonna be some cool people there. They've asked me not to promote it because it's, they can't, you know what I'm saying? Just trust me, you know, there's gonna be people there. I'm sure somebody from Kiss is gonna be there. But you should, you should be there. <laughs> Catch you guys later. <laughs>